energy. Love is not just also an energy, it is an economy. It's not also just an economy, it is a way of life. And the Bible says this kind of energy, this kind of economy, don't bestow it, don't channel it to anything in this world, nor the world. The first instruction is to love not the world. I shared with us last week that Satan never discussed A with Adam. Satan and Adam never had any conversation. Satan never said PIM to Adam. The word A never joined two of them. Satan waited until what Adam loved, what his obsession was around. Satan waited for Adam's obsession to be exposed. The moment the area of his obsession was exposed, that was who Satan came for. Because the agenda is when they get where your heart is, they have caught in you. Even Jesus says where your treasure is, that is where your heart will be also. I don't know what you have prized. I don't know what you have placed as a, a very, very, you know, unique, a very choice possession in your life. But if it's anything about this world, and if it's anything that is in this world, you are trading on very slippery grounds. Now look at He says, one, love not the world. Number two, love not the things that are in the world. Then he says, if any man, it means even though you are a bishop, if anything makes anything begins to become beautiful in your eyes, if your heart begins to lust after anything, lust in this context is not even in a bad way. Just the fact that you are obsessed about any particular result, any particular outcome, any particular possession. When you are looking for, let's say, let's use a car or marriage, I must marry. When it comes to that point where it has become an obsession, the Bible says don't let anything get to that point. If anything reaches there, that's the perfect ground for temptation. Let me show you the next scripture that followed that so that you understand the premise of that scripture, the context of that scripture. Please, media, give us the next scripture. It says, for all that is in this world is what? The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and what? They are trying to help you avoid temptation by advising you, don't let your obsession become so channeled towards anything. This was what Jesus meant when he said, the prince of this world cometh and finds nothing. Because when Satan comes to tempt you, the first pursuit is what is the obsession of this man? What is he driving after? What is his, his whole passion consumed with? When Satan comes and he finds out that there is only one thing that is the focal point of your existence. <laughs> Jesus. At the center of it all is you there I see. Oh, Jesus. Listen, listen. You will not know how patient spirits are. You will not know how intentional they can be. A spirit can be on one project for 10 years, following it gradually. A spirit can cause lack in your life just so that the right atmosphere for a particular dealing can be created. The lack itself is not the end. The lack is a means to an end. That lack is to create an atmosphere so that, so that a particular suggestion can follow. May God remain our obsession. Let me tell you something. Okay, mind you, the title of our discourse is the conclusion of the whole matter. I want to give you the submission of the great teacher, Solomon. He gave his life to experiment on various fronts. He did not withhold any pleasure from himself. He lived his life experimenting all kinds of pleasures. And he left, he left reports on, on his findings across every, every, everything he journeyed on. He, he will give a report. If Solomon wants to take wine, he will not take a bottle. He will order for, for, for drums of red wine. He will drink until he pass out. So he will push that thing till the end of that lust. Then when he wakes up, huh? he will say, my son, 
strong drink. <laughs> if, if Solomon becomes tempted with lust, he will not they will not go and watch pornography. You know you, you are the one you go and hide somewhere. Solomon will go and marry. He, he will marry 700 wives and 300 concubines and make it 1,000. Then he will push the lust to the extreme. Now that lust that powered that action, even if he is meeting with one, one of his wife every night, he will not be able to meet them all in one year. If you married Solomon, your turn of meeting your husband will be in two years' time. And you will treasure your, your own night, your own, your own day. <laughs> when, when he finishes at, on, on, on that particular part of exploring lust, he will come back and say, My son, give not your strength to that which destroy kings. If Solomon wants to brag, you know your own your, your pride is because of there's there is one million in your account. Somebody made a few millions. He now carried another person's phone, his friend's phone, and hit it on the ground, broke it. That, do, do you understand what I'm trying to say? That is the money is scratching him. You just look at the phone like the guy now says, hey, he now says, how much? Some of you, if you make one, just one small, you, you, that's where you will know that there is a spirit with money. You, you will sit down at home like this, your body will be scratching, go out, go out. You don't know where you are going to, you just say, go out. He, he, he amassed wealth to an extent that a fellow noble, a fellow royal as him, came to look upon his magnificent and her submission, the queen of Sheba. She said, not even half of your realm is what I was told. Everything I was told is not up to half of what your true capacity is. When he amassed it all, he came to a point, he said, vanity upon vanity is vanity. Let me tell you the last submission he had for us. If you are with me, you are getting blessed, please say amen. In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12, which was the last book of Ecclesiastes, he left an advice. He said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. After all the experiment, this is my conclusion. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. He says, fear God. Keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man. The title of my discourse this night is the conclusion of the whole matter. Please bow your head one minute. I'm begging somebody. For many of us, the Holy Ghost wants to bring your feet into a new season again. Give me an encounter, oh God. Open my eyes. Open these eyes. Open these eyes. Are you praying to God? Peace. 
moment your life begins to make any meaningful, oh, they will come, they will come for you. Let this be your prayer forever. Hold my hands, hold my hands. If you are writing, pen it down very quickly. Three subheading. Number one, the benefits of eternal consciousness. Psalm 90 verse 12. Very quickly. Hmm. Holy Ghost, hold my hands. I will share something with you this night. You will eat. You would see a man, a generation clapping. A generation standing in awe of their perceived you know knowledge of his work with God you will see men have in their libraries the biographies of the life of certain men it will interest you to know that the only place where greatness is ascribed to their name is earth the moment we cross the great divide into the spiritual world suddenly you realize that all their pretense was not hidden from spirits. Many a man are on that path already. Everybody is looking at you and they think that you are making serious stride. You are making progress. You are an example. You are now a path to follow. And only you, only you know that you are a big fraud. Very soon, as I speak currently, there are already many young ones emulating you, following you and only you know that if, if God calls you now you are heading to eternal damnation because the government that masters your soul is not God your God is not who you profess worship in your mouth to your God is who you obey if you check your obedience, the particular direction that your obedience is always channeled towards, that is the accurate way to know who you are serving. You are serving who you are obeying. And for too many people, obedience is not towards God. In Psalm 90 verse 12, the Bible says, So teach us, teach us to number our days, so that we may incline our hearts unto what? Wisdom. What does it mean to number your days? Is to come into eternal consciousness. To know that life is passive. To know that life is momentary. To know that this life, hey, there is a particular mindset a man must sustain if he will have the capacity to walk past the corruption of this world. We will live as pilgrims here on earth. We will be looking for a city whose builder and maker is the Lord. You will not settle, you will not camp, you will not finally build your estate here. Because if all you have is here, your heart will be here too. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The average Christian, I'm, I'm begging somebody, please, if you can, try and avoid distraction. Don't move around, just look at me. Many years back in children church, ah, may God bless those men, may God bless them everywhere they are. Many years back, every Tuesday, every Sunday, we had Friday revival service then too. And I will see those, you know, I was telling some people on Tuesday, I saw some of my children taught teachers, you know, teachers rather at Deeper Life Church. I saw them recently and I saw one of them. He's, he used to be a young man as a then while he was instructing us in the children's church. I saw him recently, all his hair was white. I saw his back was bent. But that same old brown Bible was still inside his armpits. He was walking like this. And that was the most 
beautiful sight I have captured. There was a beauty in my soul associated to that visage. It was clear and evident that the end of the righteous is well. Gather anything you gather. Gather any kind of wealth you gather. As you are drawing near to the grave, you look more pitiful when you are without Jesus. <laughs> a man who has a track record of faithfulness with God, the more old they are becoming, the more closer to the grave they get. When you see a believer on the hospital bed, you don't feel pity for him. There is a sense, a confidence, a beauty. Hey, there is a realm he is about to step into that is already leaving a little deposit on him. He is between two worlds. Sometimes you go to meet them and their faith in the physical world has depleted so much. So they are saying, pray for me, pray for me. My faith is down. But beneath, inside that voice, there's an energy that continues to tell you, I am not afraid of where I'm going to. Death is not an enemy for us. We will embrace it any day, any time. Any time it comes, we will take it. For me to live is Christ, says the apostle. But if I die, he says it's not lost, it's gain. It's only unbelievers that will be crying and saying, a hey, great loss. We didn't lose. You know why? Precious in the sight of the Lord are the depths of his sins. Precious. I was watching him. I went, I ran, I went to meet my children's church teacher and I said, good evening, sir. And he looked at me, he couldn't remember me. You will labor so much, you will forget all your harvest. Only, only God will pay him because inside that one little children church boy is a whole generation who will be one. Who would have told him that every day he was teaching. Every and oh may God, see I am repeating this. Let God bless that Ikumuye. I am looking at, I am looking at a generation and gradually I am realizing that the devil, the devil is just looking at us. We are ignoring children. We are ignoring them. We are busy camping in big places, talking about prosperity, talking about increase. And the generation that are coming, the devil is corrupting them from the root. You will gather money and you will raise an ungodly child. All your money will be lost between. It was one of the ordeal of Solomon. He says he has seen another, another vanity under the sun. That one will labor. And another that, that, that does not know anything about the labor will come and waste it. There is a joy in your heart knowing that although I depart this realm, I have left a godly heritage behind. There is a joy. Listen, even if you don't win a soul, raise somebody, raise somebody. Be responsible for one person you know you gave your life to. You show them the way of the Lord. If it cannot be your own children, if you don't have children, look for somebody, brother. Look for somebody, sister. But at all costs, make sure you don't leave this realm until you have won at least one. What would you go out there to go and present to your master as your token of faithfulness? What would you present when you appear in that city? You, you just showed up, only you, selfish, self-centered, nobody benefited from the bounty of God's faithfulness on your life. What was the real reward for everything God did for you? Why did God give you life for all these years? What is the proof? What is the fruit you can show for it? Nothing. Me, myself, and I. I summarize the religion of our time. Me, myself, and I. We are actually worshipping ourselves. It's selfism. So, prophecies here and there, prophesying things people have no business saying amen to. The lost that has arrested the world as it is, has now assessed the holy altars. What is the pulsating factor for an average unbeliever? What is the reason for his existence? He lives pursuing money. He wants to make it. What has become the crux of the average teaching in the average church of our time? It is the same thing that the unbeliever is pursuing. We now only use God to try to get it. So God is a means to an end inside this modern day church. There was a time when they allowed, they said, take the world, give us Jesus. 
we are looking for a city whose builder and maker is the Lord. The benefits of eternal consciousness. So teach us, he says, to number our days so that we may incline our heart unto wisdom. Listen, look at me everybody. There is a level of wisdom. There is a level of wisdom. The consciousness of eternity ministers to you. The moment you realize that this life is transient, this life is temporary, no matter any pressure you are going through in this life, the knowledge that this one is just a temporal place, one day all of this thing will be over. There is a wisdom that comes from that knowledge. So no matter how many people gang up trying to spoil your name, no matter how many kind of lack you are going through, there is a knowing in the heart of a Christian who sustain eternal consciousness that the story does not end in this life. And if you are not conscious of eternity, you will trade spiritual things for temporal physical bounties. The things Satan will withdraw from your life, eternity will be the only place you can pay for it. Any day, any time, give me Jesus. I have seen the life of the wicked. I have seen the life of the righteous. I don't like the end of the wicked. I have seen them in the morning. They look very blossoming. I have seen them looking like iniquity is a good economy. I have come, I have returned in the evening, I have seen that there is nothing envious about their life. I have seen that righteousness is like wine. It becomes better as it gets older, as you are joining in righteousness. Oh, Jesus. The conclusion of the whole matter. I need somebody to say something because I want to be sure we are on the same page on this matter and I need a consciousness to rest upon your soul. Say I will not be here forever. I mean, maybe you have to tell somebody because some people will refuse to say it to themselves because demons, demons have arrested their vocal cords. Say you will not be here forever. It's a very powerful truth you will embrace. And let me tell you something else that the consciousness of eternity brings to you. It gives you a sense of urgency. Do what you must do now. You don't have forever to do that which you must do. One of these days, that assignment, that work you must do. There's no labor in the grave where you are going to. If there is any time to honor the calling of God upon your life, it's now. There is a sense of urgency that eternal contemplation is put upon you. Most evening, Anytime I'm in Kaduna and I'm not in the mission field, that is what actually occupies my meditation, eternal consciousness. One day, I know that one day, one day, oh Jesus, I, I am not afraid of death because I know death is not the end of life. Death is a passage into another life. And if you don't labor to have an inheritance in that other life, you will appear there like a stranger. You will appear there no friends, nothing, nobody is interested in anything you did throughout your life. If you live for yourself, if you live for yourself in this world, that's the most helpless, the most wicked thing you can do to yourself, living for yourself. Just trying to make ends meet. Me, myself and I. How old are you, brother? How old are you, sister? I don't expect you to answer that because another question will follow. In those years, what have you done for the Lord? If my children church teacher cannot say anything, no matter where he is now, even Jesus will not probably not remind him but any soul that is one through my voice they link it back to that person who labored on that one soul one he was there so I found that even when we went to campus when the pressure of all kinds of layers of corruption came to buffet our soul when children from ungodly homes came with their pressure the peer pressure was strong I found out 
there is only how far we could depart from the ways of God. He says, train up a child in the way he should go, so that when he is old, he will not depart from it. He says, and that from a child, thou has learned the Holy Scripture, which is able to make thee wise. Every day they were laboring, and they found teaching aids, teaching aids, so they knew how to communicate the gospel to children. If you check our, our outline, you will see they, they drew things like cartoons. Because for a child, it is all of those pictorial mediums that you can communicate your message to them most effectively. So we will be looking at the cartoon and the things they wrote in, from the mouth of those cartoon you know, figure. And the gospel was entering our soul gradually. My mother did not follow me everywhere. My father didn't follow me everywhere. They were stages of my life. They stayed behind. And they trusted that the application they have installed upon me can carry me going forward. What did they install in me? They left Adonai inside me. They knew that once in a while you would fall, once in a while you would make a mistake, but you will not deny your identity. We have programmed you for God. <laughs> Don't leave your children helpless. I'm begging somebody now. It's a battlefield out there. Governments of many nations are putting some antichrist policies as the day go by. Does it not truly marvel you? Recently, somebody sent me something within the week. I think it's Sweden. Sweden. They just, you know, uh, <laughs> I don't know how to break this news to you. <laughs> they just um, came together and approved a new spot. The name of that spot is sex. So the, the spot is, they want to check people who can last longer in sex. They want to check different kinds of, you know, the way you have swimming styles. So they, they will now form a curriculum as to what you will be rehearsing. So pornography will no longer become anything that is offensive. Pornography will be like you are watching highlights of your favorite spot. The way, the way you miss a match and you are watching highlights. Eh? So eh, you don't know what I'm trying to tell you. Let me tell you the interest, the, the only obsession of princes. If you are with me, say amen. amen. Ah, ah, some of you are not with me. I know you don't like this message. You, you prefer I, I prophesy. <laughs> How many of you have seen the movie Prophet Sodom? <laughs> sit down, see, see. This kind of standing up is, is, is suddenly that I used to do it. <laughs> Just sit down, sit down. You, you know what the interest of princes actually is? They are one obsession. The only thing they are interested in. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Help me. Please, that child, that child that is crying, let's, let's let the nursing mother go to the back. It's important. It's important. That, that kind of cry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, let's, let's attend to the mic. Let's attend to the sound quickly. I was going to tell you what the obsession of princes are. And then my, my mic, my mic now. Amen. Yes, yes, this is it. Uh, let's celebrate the technicality. What is the obsession of princes in this broken world? Their obsession is one. Please give me your attention. It's very important. They know that the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is a marker of the judgment of this world. They know that the rapture will only be Jesus, the bridegroom, coming for a spotless and chest bride. So the qualification for rapture is not only being decided by heaven, they are aware that the rapture will be decided from by, rather by the readiness of the bride. If the bride is ready, it is her readiness that will now translate into an utterance that says, come Lord Jesus, come. And it is the spirit and the bride that will say, come Lord Jesus, come. 
and the spirit is the godhead that is currently with the church because his assignment is to prepare the bride and the moment she is prepared he will now give a signal to the bridegroom and say it is time to come so the interest of princes is to make sure that the bride will never be prepared so that time continues to elongate so that they continue to have ample time and the world as it is cannot be brought to judgment the interest of the holy ghost also is to prepare the bride so that she can enter into the fullness of her preparation so that judgment can happen and so if judgment must happen the bride must be prepared this is why they are trying to throw everything around you into corruption they want anything you are seeing let it continue to minister layers of corruption into your soul so that the bride will never be prepared and if the bride is never prepared ultimately it means the appearing of the son of man can never come if you don't know what i'm trying to describe it is a narrative that was captured in revelation chapter 5 it is a similar thing playing out now there is an agenda of god but it cannot be put into motion yet because there is a condition that must be met and the people who are responsible for bringing that condition into time and making it happen is men it's not spirits again they have given us a program that rapture will happen but the rapture cannot happen anytime they like they are prepared but we are not prepared so he says in Revelation 5, I saw in the right hand of he that sat upon the throne a book written and sealed with seven seals. He says, and I heard a mighty angel proclaim with a loud voice saying, who is worthy? Who is worthy to carry the book and to open it and to read it thereof? Guess what? They say no man was found. That's, what, that's Satan's biggest obsession. That in any day God needs to move, let no man be found it came to pass that the submission of the immortal realm as touching the purposes of God in a certain season was that I sought for a man and I found no it's sweet Satan every time God's agenda is bankrupted on the account that there is no man to partner with even the rapture as an agenda of God they know that if we continue to defile and defy and defy the whole system the bride will never be just the bride will never be pure and the bridegroom is only going to come for a spotless ah. disobedience until our obedience is complete. Help us, Holy Ghost. First Corinthians, very quickly. First Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 9. First Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 19, rather. Verse 19. The Bible says, if in this life only we have hope in Christ the Berean Bible says if we have hope in Christ only in this life we are of all men most miserable most miserable is there any joy in your life that is about eternity is there anything that you are looking forward to is there anything that you kept is there any expectation any joy that is only found in eternity in your life those days those days i remember sometimes we come out from church and i tell some of my friends 
there are few people who were with me in children's church. Few people who were in the same, you know, um, class with me in children's church back then. Brother, brother Samuel Ada, I think, is one example I can call him. Brother Samuel Ada, who were together in children's church. We formed, we formed one small, one small arrangement. We called it prayer warriors. The meeting day was Friday in church. We, the prayer warriors of children's church, we set on Tuesday and God bless our children's church teachers. They didn't stop us. We will come. I would, I would come back from school, primary school, quickly go and wear a shirt that has collar and stuck in it. My father would say, Pastor, I will run from home with my Bible. There was no message. I want to just open it and stand in front of them, then we'll be praying. We prayed for the Holy Ghost one day because we thought it was about shout. We were shouting because we wanted the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I heard some people praying the Holy I was the only one, the leader. I was the only one that was not filled with the Holy Ghost. I knew they began to doubt my capacity to lead them. We will finish and come out like this. You will be feeling as though let the world not touch you. See, that, the experience I'm trying to describe, it, you will not find it in the current day church. Take my word for it. You will feel like you won't go and hide inside room. Only you and Jesus. You, the purity in your heart is, is palpable. You, you, can, you can feel it, so you want to protect it. There were some friends that began to be offended at me on the ground that I, I told them outrightly that I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. Ha, huh, see, we need to go back to that place. There must be a clear dichotomy between the world and the church. Because as I speak currently, the line is becoming fainter and fainter. You can't even tell the difference between the world and the church anymore. There's so much mixture. We don't know where we divide again. Every song of the world, the church carries it and puts Jesus. The same sound, the same li Jesus, Jesus. Every dressing style of the world, the church carries it. Let's start dancing now inside the presence of God. Go and check the dance step. It is steps motivated, inspired by demons, pioneered by, by strange elements. That is the same thing we brought to come and give an offering to the great one. The people who have mentored us is the world. We will be in church in those days. When we close and go back to class, your life in church will follow you into class. So they will look at you and say, holy, holy. They were so offended at what our life represented. You were living your normal life and all they were seeing is that you were condemning them. We must return back to that part. It's called the ancient part. You are not of this world. Don't settle here. The people who don't have any hope outside here are living for here. But if only in this world we have hope, we are of all men most miserable. You must know that there is an inheritance I have. I am waiting for that kingdom. Oh, Holy Ghost. I sense in my spirit, there's no need to rush today. Somebody needs to bow down their heart and say, Holy Ghost. I, I abandon all these cares of life and all these distractions. Everything that has become an obsession, everything I have pursued, everything that has become my goal that was not you, I drop it behind now. I live for one confession, one verdict. Heaven at last. Heaven at last. Heaven at last. Welcome, thou good and faithful servant. Welcome, thou good and faithful servant. Hear it again. Welcome, thou good and faithful servant.
Point number two, the consecrated life. If you are writing very quickly, point two, the consecrated life. The consecrated life. The consecrated life. Please write down quickly, you're writing point number two, the consecrated life. In Romans chapter 12 verse 1, the Bible says, I beseech you, therefore brethren, by the mercies of the Lord, that you present your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now you have given your life to Jesus. Now we profess spirituality with our mouth. Does it not pain you? Does it not offend you? Does it not grieve your heart? That the layer of corruption the average Christian is bedeviled with continues to undermine the level of purity he genuinely intends to walk in. Listen. Listen, please look at me. I need your attention. The whole world lieth in wickedness. Another diagnosis from the spirit world is that the heart of man is desperately wicked. In Isaiah chapter 60, huh? verse 2, it says, Behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, cross darkness the people. If this is the state of the world, if this is the state of things on ground, and then you are born into this kind of world, how can you live a victorious Christian life? It is the consecrated life. Your life is no longer your own. What is that consecrated life? That's what the apostle said, I beseech you, therefore brethren, by the mercies of the Lord, you present your body. Leave your body upon the altar. Don't, don't, listen, look at me. If you give this body one minute of rest, you will be amazed the next thing your flesh is looking for once you are satisfied. Have you ever eaten to your satisfaction before? Like you ate to a, a place, I'm, I'm not talking you just ate until, until you, you are good. Your good is different from satisfied. There is a place where you stopped eating, but you knew you could still do more, but you had one that exercised control. The reason for that is because when the flesh is pushed to a place of satisfaction, the next yearning will be strange iniquity. You will not believe. Strange in. I'm giving somebody Espo. Espo. This is your Espo. Part of your consecration will be food. You will not, you will not, anything you will die, you will not ever eat to satisfaction. You will only eat to be healthy. Because the day you hit that, that place, the next thing the flesh thinks of is pleasure. There are people in our midst here, you have never studied the story behind your fall. Your fall has a storyline. If you pay attention, you will, pick, you will pick the similar narrative in all your fall. It will always be that after you have gone through fasting, after you have gone through study of the word, in that time where you have achieved some measure of spiritual virtue, you will be walking like a cherub. No temptation can bring you down. Suddenly you now broke the fast. And while you were breaking, you did not factor that you are not supposed to eat until the flesh attains his, his level of dominion again. You only eat to stay healthy. Then you eat and suddenly a great surge of temptation comes. Some of you, your temptation is always at night. That's when the besetting sin that governs your life, that's when it finds a strong foothold. And so begin to study the storyline of your fall. If, if you now see that your temptation is at night, check the activities that are built into your night. You will see, you will see the appetite. You will see what is feeding that appetite. You will cut it. That's the first step of consecration. There are things that are not wrong, but you will not do it anymore. That's what consecration is. It is your own, your own way of appreciating the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Consecration is your response. Just imagine I sat down after a meeting like this. I just went home and then they brought two 
hot, big wraps of pandayam. I sat down and said the Lord's Prayer and ate it all up. Guess what? The flesh never dies. The seed of iniquity is in the flesh. The seed of righteousness is in your spirit. Your soul is your consciousness. Your soul is, look, is hearing the opinion of these two, these two conflicting spirits. Hey, Jesus. Your flesh will always support Satan till you die. Your flesh will always be giving the opinion of Satan on every matter. This is why Jesus lived a fasted lifestyle. This was why Jesus was praying, although he is God. Yet early, long while before the sun will rise. The Bible says he has retreated into a mountain and there he will pray. What was he looking for? The strength to live for another 12 hours of sunshine. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Lord, that you present your bodies as living sacrifice. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. Have you presented your body upon the altar? It was in Psalms. The Bible says, bind the sacrifice with cords. Bind it with cords, even unto the horn of the altar. Tie yourself to that altar. You know what happens upon the altar of burnt offering? The instruction on that altar is that, let the fire never go out. The moment that fire dies, you will realize the flesh can regenerate. There are, there are people who lived, who lived invisible to the radar of darkness for 30 years. And in two years, everything they labored for 30 years, in two years, the devil crumbled everything. A mistake of just two hours. He ruined legacy of 30 years. Stay on that altar. The Holy Ghost will begin to influence his opinion upon yours. He will dress in a way you want to come out. The Holy Ghost will say no. Remove this one. When you start following his opinion, the world will observe that you and them you are not the same because it's another spirit that is powering their own opinion. Then that difference between you and them will become your point of conflict. Can I share something with you? If the world loves you, there is a problem with your Christianity. Take my word for it. And the average person sitting here, the world loves you. Your friends are unbelievers and they are okay being friends with you. There is something wrong with your faith. A, a believer, when you are with an unbeliever like this, the first instinct in him is he is feeling like you are condemning him. And you are not condemning him. You are, you are only living out the economy of your own realm. Now, count four of your friends and you will see that three among them are unsaved. There is something fundamentally wrong with your own faith. May we never lose our wonder May we never lose our wonder. Let it not be in this generation. May we never lose our wonder. May we never lose our wonder. You used to be obsessed. You used to be intoxicated with God. You were conscious of the presence of the Holy Spirit on your inside. You have ignored him now so much that you are no longer even conscious of his voice anymore. The consecrated lifestyle for me to live is Christ. Please, I, I need somebody to say these things with me. Say for me to live is Christ. Again, for me to live is Christ. You know what it means? The purpose of my life is Jesus Christ. And when death comes, it's a gain for me. That's what the apostle said. I live to serve his will. I live to serve his will. I live to bless your name. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings.
forward this week but bring them bring them in everybody just get your chairs coming squeeze squeeze yourself into any place you see from here to that side
instructed. Let's pray for one minute in the Holy Ghost, wherever you are. The Holy Ghost is here. His presence is mighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Please, please, let's, let's limit movement. I, I really don't want distraction. The Holy Ghost will do very mighty things in our midst. The transformation will be epochal. And so, nothing stops what we are building this evening. <laughs> please. If there is any lady outside, and a brother is sitting down, you should feel ashamed. Let, let the ladies come inside. Brothers, we are good to go. All right. Let's, let's be seated. Let's be seated. No more movement, please. I just want our attention. My, my seat is vacant. Put somebody there. I was going to show us a scripture, a very powerful truth. And so I'm glad. I really apologize for the rain. There is little or nothing we can do about it. The capacity of the hall is small for us. We are currently on our sanctuary project. By the grace of God, we will build a befitting place for the worship of the name of the Lord our God. And so just bear with us. We are trusting the Lord you know, to raise a citadel of worship that we will not have any of these, you know, challenges uh, subsequently by the grace of God. So we were taking our reading from Mark chapter 9 from verse 42. And in verse 42, please, can, we, can I have more volume on this mic because of the rain? In verse 42, we were looking at... Amen. If you can hear me, say Amen. amen. Come on, if you can hear me and you are getting blessed, say amen. amen. Good. Let's read together at the count of two. One, two, go. If anyone. one of these little ones who believe in me to sin he says it would be better for him to be thrown into the sea with a large milestone tied around his neck Jesus was giving the verdict for anybody who leads others into sin he was giving the verdict for those who will become gates of hell who will become channel by which other people will be drawn into corruption and damnation Let's continue our reading very quickly. It's a long reading. Let's do it quickly. One, two, go. And if thy hand offend thee, please say my hand. The Bible says if your hand offend you, it says cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell. Which hell? Into the fire that never shall be quenched. Let me show you the next verse that follows this so you will know the fire they were speaking about. Let's continue. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not what? Let's read it together. One, two, go. Jesus was emphasizing in each of these particular verses, he was talking about a fire that will never be quenched. Say never. See, listen, you, are, you have escaped this gospel for a long time. They have, they have removed a reality of eternal, the, eternal, the eternal results. There's only two eternal locations. And Jesus says eternal life, everlasting life, these things are packaged when we enter eternity. Some people will enter eternal damnation. And the fire shall never be quenched. 
the worms in that fire diet not. The worms that are inside that fire are designed to bring other layers of torment. So that it is not like you are conscious of the flame that is devouring you. There is also corruption eating you up. Worms piercing your body. I'm not talking about this body. Has fire burned this your body? Or this is your small body? You were, you were trying to own stove. Then by mistake, the small matches. The fire now burns higher than normal. Then that small fire that came up now touched your, 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 your epidemic. Eh? <laughs> Did you see the sorrow? The sorrow that you enter? That fire is a joke. There is a fire prepared for demons. Prepared for the devil and his angels. Have you seen a, a demon before? My last encounter with one, I, I was looking, I was by his ankle, the height of the beam. His head was not visible. His head was inside the cloud. It's only his leg. But I was hearing his voice. He was talking to me. And his body was like scale. Have you seen a tortoise's back? I know you will not answer. Whether you will run from it now or you, 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 you answer now, one of these days, everybody will confront the truth. The, the skin was like the scale of a tortoise, hard. They prepared that kind of fire for those kinds. You are soft as you are. You now decide that you are. Hey, Jesus. That is the fire that if they put those guys there, they, they will be in torment. They will be in sorrow. They didn't design it for you. Did you know that when they made mention of hell in the Bible, they particularly left a detail that it was prepared for the devil and his angels. It's not for man or hey, if you go there. Hiya, hiya. Hiya, hiya. Bacada is only a This is the only song the elders sang them. They will look at your life without Jesus. They know you are a tragedy. I was living, I was living in Baggy Villa some years back. The most closest route to my house was that cemetery road. So I'll take a bike at the junction. While we're going in, I'll be looking at the, the graves. Some of it, the names, the names, you can't see it on it again. Because of the effect of er erosion, wind erosion and water erosion, it has cleaned the name. Some of it, the loved ones don't remember where they buried them again. They, they just know it's around that side, it's around that side. Some grave, they have put another grave on top. Many times I'll be going home and I'll see a few group of people gathered. And I, I know that they are carrying somebody again. They are coming to put his body and all kinds of statements. Glorious exits. Heaven at last. Are you serious? If you like, ignore Jesus. You will not ignore him forever. Ignore him now. You know you think you think you are smart. You think you are learned. First, somebody will say, Where is that? Her? They get one, her, one of a high heel like that. Where I like, you come and carry it. When it's all been said, 
and on. There is just one thing that matters. Did I do my best to live for you? Did I live my life for you? Let's continue our reading very quickly. Where there are worms, you see another emphasis. Je Jesus emphasized this three times. Where there are worms, diet not, and the fire is not quenched. I pass, you know, sometimes on the street of television, and I see many obituaries. Many of them are young men. Many of them are young women. Sometimes you look at the picture of the people. Ah. The parents went, they looked for any responsible picture. They cannot find. He doesn't have any responsible picture as a proof of his, of, of his way of life. Then they just looked for one picture that he was, he was like this with one high. Then, then they just write under, gone too soon. Gone where? Gone where? I will share one truth with you this evening. You will see why even the believer can cry. When it's all been said and done Only just one thing will matter Did you do your best to live for truth? Did you live your life for Him? Did you Did I live my life for you? Did I live my life for you? Let's proceed very quickly. Time is not on our side. I bless the Lord for the rain. <laughs> and if thy eye, somebody say I. You see, the first thing we started from is your hand. Then they say your feet. Now they say your eye. You know what they are talking about? Any journey that can lead you away from God, cut it off. Any possession you can possess that can take you away from God, it says cut it off. Anything that can distract you in your focus of the celestial city, it says cut it off. It means there are many things that are not wrong but it is a channel for corruption you can identify. The Bible expects that you will cut those things off. You will deny yourself those things. No matter how good they appear, but because there is a layer of corruption embedded in them. Some of you, the Holy Ghost instruct that no more would you watch movies. But you cannot keep that consecration. Because every time you watch a movie, a trigger, a trigger for something that was dead, something that the Holy Ghost has deadened, that movie can, a, a, five, a five seconds clip can activate the flesh again. And the Holy Ghost says, stay away. It's consecration matter. It is consecration now. Some of you, your consecration is no relationship. And you ask the Holy Ghost, so how will I marry? He will say, trust me. Trust me. Don't enter any relation." the last three relationships you entered it became a bed of fornication and it was pushing you into different layers of corruption the Holy Ghost is now telling you say no it's a consecration if I tell you something you will not believe me I don't remember the last time I listened to a secular song if I take some of your phones now you Tongue speaking Christian. I will, I will see some soft, some soft RB song somewhere. That one is for evening, in the cool of the day. That's why Satan is cooling you down. May God make your RB to become Theophilus. I told you about how the righteous die. I was called by a family in Enugu. Their son developed kidney, kidney failure. 
and all, all kinds of, all kinds of help proved abortive. I don't think, I don't think there are, there are two, more than two or one places that they have not taken that boy to, for prayers, you know, veterans to pray for him. And so, they didn't bother even asking me to pray. Because if senior men have prayed, So the boy said they should come in. He wants to speak with me. I didn't know that that night was his. his I will be the last human being he spoke with before he journeyed into the great beyond. He said he want to speak to Apostolfa. Apostolfa. So the parents now called me and gave me. They sent me a text message. When I saw the gravity of the case, I I I quickly put a call. So we connected, and I was hearing his voice very faint. So I said, brother, how are you doing? He said, I'm well. Well, so just just to remove the conversation from the whole sadness and all that, I said, "What do you feel like eating?" He said, "Nothing, nothing. I don't have appetite, Apostle." I knew he wanted to gist. He does not have gist. A ram, you will come to a point in your life very soon. You will not have gist again. Nothing, nothing else matter. It's just there. Now said Akai, but he would like, he would like if they can play him till blossom. I lie not to you under heaven. That was the sound that brother used to escape this realm. Just it, it was Theophilus that was his ladder, his ventilation. The song was in the background. Then then he he drew his last breath and left. We didn't cry. There was no need to cry. Precious in the sight of the Lord are the death of his saints. It is when sinners die that we, we, we grieve because we know that it was a loss. Who would have told Theophilus many years back that this, this thing, this thing God put inside him will become a ladder bridging heaven and earth that men can, can climb that song and enter the great beyond. That when doubt of the unknown is coming, if you hear his voice, you will know where you are going to. Others may, I cannot. I cannot. You can't see me in any party. It's a lie. I can never go there. If you like, call it anything. It's a birthday, something. You want to just do. I know what you want to do there. You will not see me. I will never drink alcohol. It's a consecration. I will never smoke. I will never take anything that will make me lose control of my willpower. I will never. Satan will capitalize on those few moments. Some of you, you will make some decisions while you are high that you will be regretting for the rest of your life. One decision in highness. Were you really high? This is consecration. It was Job that said, I have made a covenant with my eye. It's consecration. of time let's quickly tie it up point number three quickly our last point point number three the aftermath the aftermath the aftermath the aftermath holy ghost god of holy ghost holy certain things, certain things the Holy Ghost is telling you from today from today these are your consecrations for some of us for a long time now no breakfast, it's normal you can't eat breakfast again 
If you eat it, it will be like grass in your mouth. It's not tasty. You eat it, you start feeling guilty. It's consecration. A spirit, a spirit has placed another consecration on your vessel. The people I'm speaking about is a call that is on your life. It's a call. It's because of that call. They have, they have moved ahead of you. They didn't, they didn't even want to ask you because they know you will disobey. They remove breakfast. Even though you go and eat it, now they remove taste. It is not there again. So if you eat breakfast, you start feeling sick. Consecration. They say, stay away. Kings don't eat breakfast. Woe betide that city whose, whose king and noble eat in the morning. They want to make you a royal, to a royal to a generation. So they, they cut off things that will make you very heavy. If I call some, some people's names now, the number of people who will be angry for hearing that name because of your way of life. If I mention some names here and I say, come, come up, brother. More than four sisters scattered different places will just put their head down like this. Somebody told me that there's one brother anytime, anytime you just see him around here that she, she doesn't know why she just she just disconnects. I didn't bother asking why. That, that she, she disconnects. I wanted to say disconnect. from verse 19 very quickly there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of wounds and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked the wounds of Lazarus. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died. Please say the rich also died. You will come to a place, you will come to a junction, you come to a season that wealth is not sufficient to command deliverance anymore. And so they say Lazarus died and the rich man also died. But something about the death of Lazarus was that he was carried by the angels of the Lord into the bosom of Abraham. But the rich man died and behold what they said concerning him. And was buried. <laughs> that the rich man died eh, and was buried. Concerning Lazarus. Go back, go back. See, I was talking about something still. It came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels. The beggar died. The beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. The angels didn't bother carrying the dead. need to waste transport you, you as fuel is cast like this you will start facing something from that place you die that, that spot where, where you drop Lord help us to contemplate on eternity and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angel of Abraham no go 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 for that we have, we have passed this after they buried the rich man, the next place he saw himself. They say, and in hell, he lifted up his eyes. Being in what? So there is torment in hell. Please whisper to that brother by your side that is trying to explain that hell is Gehenna. Is there are different words for hell? It's not really fire. It is um, it's a place of darkness. It's a place of disconnection from life. It's a place of cessation. See, when you finish speaking English, you you discover something. And in hell, he lift up his eyes, being in what? Torments. 
Jesus told us what that torment is. The fire never goes out and the worms never die. When he lifted up his eye, so these things are suggestive. I want to show you what Jesus was teaching here. It means if you are in hell, you can be seeing those who are in hell. The, the design of that thing is part of the torment. It's the part of the torment is that you will know that some people are chilling. They, 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 created, they created a system. You know you are laughing. It's a serious matter. If you go to hell, <laughs> Jesus. So he lifted up his eye and he, 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 saw, he saw Lazarus. And he, he knew Lazarus because he knew him on earth. So he saw among the many people that were resting inside paradise, he saw one that he recognized. So he now, he now said something. I'll show you what he said. And he cried because in hell, your way of talking is crying. He cried and said, Father Abraham, <laughs> how can Abraham have mercy on you? Have mercy on me and send Laz the same Lazarus, the only person he knows in heaven. He said, Let them send that person to him. It means if you if you if you continue to do Ayo Ayo, you now go to hell. The people that you know, you will see them. Do, do you realize, do you realize that? He did not recognize any of his friends he held. Eh? Let's talk now. We went, we went to preach some years back around that joint where they drink there. I didn't know the man was high already. So I was telling him about Jesus and eternity and the end of a sinner. And he said, if, if they go to hell, they will use peace and quench the fire. mind I said no Allah <laughs> so, we'll, go, we'll go quench him with our peace then his, his, his comrades did not say hey, you know, I... let, let this day be recorded you will, you will forget that you, can, you cannot peace in heaven Oh, Holy Ghost. This is not supposed to be a funny talk. He cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this place. Next verse, not this. But no, let's read together, everybody. One, two, go. Remember, the next verse is my emphasis. Everybody, let's read together now as loud as we can. his lifetime, he didn't know Father Abraham. He didn't know that Abraham was father. It means the moment you die, everybody will become a believer. There will be no atheists in eternity. Do you understand what I'm telling you? I'm begging somebody. I, I beg you, don't wait to see it by yourself. I have had out-of-body experience three times. The last one I can remember, it was by virtue of a high fever. My spirit left my body and I saw my body on the bed. I lie not under heaven. God is my witness. My, my body was on the bed and I saw me standing by my body. There was only one feeling, fear. Fear, deep fear. I knew I would go to hell. No, see, nobody will argue in that place. Nobody. As, 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 as soon as you come out, you will know where you are going. 
forget all those comedy skits. Forget those comedy skits. You just see they are trying to trivialize eternity. That you know, two angels were arguing with one man. You, you are joking, wrong. As soon as the rich man died, his number one interest is please, Father Abraham, send somebody to go and warn my brothers. That became his number. So, why won't you warn the unsaved now that you are alive? That was the most important assignment for the rich man. He said, Go, go and warn my brothers. This, this is not a fate anybody should see. Go and warn them. I accept that I am damned. I accept that my own fate is sealed. Please warn my brothers who are still alive. The response of Father Abraham is a message I want everybody to read very loud. Please, media, keep our scripture for us. But Abraham said, No, no, this is not. For I have. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Next verse. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, if one went unto them from the dead, if one person resurrects and go back and talk to them, they'll believe the person that came from the realm. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither would they be persuaded though one rose from the dead. Next verse. Then said he, No, this is not. Next verse. I wanted to show you something the something Father Abraham said that nothing nothing can come from there to here and nothing can go from here to there. That's what I wanted to show you. He says, and besides all this between us and you, there is a great what? Gulf. There is a great divide. There is a great space between us in heaven and you in the place. There is a great gulf between us. He says, so that they which will pass from hence to you cannot. Say from hence. Let me tell you what Abraham was saying. He says, there is a great divide. So that the first thing that divide was going to do is to stop those who wanted to pass from rest, from pleasure, from rest, from paradise into the other side because of the loved ones they will see. If you don't, if you don't evangelize your loved ones here, you will be in rest and when you just, just imagine your mom, imagine your dad, imagine your brother. You'll be looking at them now. You are not telling them about Jesus. They put a divide because there is a tendency that people will want to go from hence to dance. And the movement is not only people trying to traffic from affliction into rest. There are people who saw their loved ones and their hearts began. This is the greatest body of the rich man. He says, send someone to warn my brother. You, now, you are alive. And you are the only one who is saved to your family. You are not bothered. You will go out, come back with your Bible, ignore them. They are mocking you and you are looking at them. You will go put your earpiece, be listening to message, ignore them. You will think you will, you will be fulfilled. You will never be fulfilled if you are the only one that made the celestial city. Because there is recognition in eternity. All these people you did not win. All these people you did not preach to. Your heart will still have affection for them. Your joy will be shortcut. You will not believe it. You will just find out that there is a body in your soul about everybody. Yes, the cry, the moaning, the weeping, the groaning of a loved one. 
and they, are, they know you are seeing them, you, you are seeing them, they are seeing you. I am inviting everybody this night to become very intentional about the great, the great, it's a great commission. Go ye into all the world. Start from your Jerusalem. Start from your family. Go and talk to them about Jesus. Go and preach to them. Don't give up on them. Some of you, a loved one becomes so stubborn. You talk to them today. You say, okay, don't give up. Stay on them. have peace until you dry whatever is the cause of that tears. Some of you boys, you you be pretending like you don't love your brother because among boys there's this thing you don't want to show emotion. But the day anybody try to touch your brother outside, you forget you and him have some challenge. You go and beat the person first, then you come back and continue your grudge with him. It's a sign that I am the only one permitted to be fighting with this person. Don't don't near him. You genuinely love him. You don't know the things, the things that will become the lot of the average man if you don't reach out and put a message that can save their soul. Talk to them about Jesus. Your neighbors are there. You are not saying anything. You are quiet. One day you wake up as usual. Then you see people crying in one room somewhere. They say, Mama, this person is dead. It does not occur to you yet. You go and meet that person later. And you will be amazed. They will recognize you. Then they will remember. So you know all these things. And you never for once shared with me. What would you say? I was ashamed. What would you say? I didn't want to disturb you. And you were there as an ambassador of the kingdom. You are the only Christian. They gave them the opportunity to meet. And the Christian never spoke to them about Jesus. The Lord told me to call one brother. Call him, call him, call him. I was procrastinating. Procrastinating. And I knew him last in primary school. Procrastinating. Call him. I will call him. I will call him. Call him. The next news somebody gave me was that the brother was in St. Gerard for one week. For one week he was ill, then he died. That one week was the, the period of the body. From the day that they, they knew that this one will soon leave time, they began to put it in my heart, call him. Call him. He was ready to give his life to Jesus at that moment. They just needed a messenger, somebody who can bear the message. Someone who can come and say, I present to you life and death. Choose life. He slipped into questionable eternity. There are people who are genuinely tired of their way of life. They are no longer finding pleasure in that way of iniquity anymore. They are just waiting for somebody who can come and, and show them the way out. A sister met me one day. The way she was dressed, you know, the, the, the kind of exposing dressing, the kind of adornment, everything was pointing red flag, red flag, red flag. But I was amazed by what came out of her mouth. She said, sir, I am genuinely tired of is a sinner who is at the end of their self. They are, they, are, they are ready to receive the message. From January to June, have you won one soul? Is there one, just one? One. I wish I can give you statistics of people who die per second, per minute, per hour. If I show you, if I show you, you will be alarmed. And so broad is the way that leads to damnation. Because many are the ones who walk them. Narrow is the path that leads to life. Only few find it. Where there are worms, tired not. And the fire never quench. Hellfire is not a Sunday school story 
one of these days, you will see the reality. Heaven, heaven is not a fairy tale. One of these days, you will see the reality. When the road is called up yonder, when the reality is rolled like a blanket, suddenly your certificate, you will realize it's not relevant. It's not relevant. That was not the main reason for life. It's not, it's not BSc. It's not MSc. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man. So my life is not making progress. Make sure, make sure that even if there is a disadvantage you are currently experiencing and you are trusting God for a change, make sure you have a healthy spiritual voyage. Make sure your compass is pointing towards the celestial city spiritually. It is better to miss your way on earth and find your way in heaven. It is better to be a pauper on earth and be among the nobles in the city to come. It is better to lose everything here and gain the world to come. What shall it profit a man? Though he gained the world, he lost his soul. That's, I'm, I'm sorry, I am genuinely sorry. This is what I see as the life state of the average Christian of this generation. He's not ready for eternity. Everything he labors for is about properties, about possessions, and you can now see where his treasure is. Since his treasure is here, his heart is here. He has no eternal reflection. He does not live for eternity. Every day he's in church, he's blessing, prophecy. Papa, you prophesied, I came to it. He, he didn't think about death. He didn't think that the ordinance of death is a, is a constant. You must die. Lazarus died. The rich man died also. And guess what? God is not obligated to preempt you or give you a knowledge of the day of your appointment with death. Your only, your only decision is to make sure you are perpetually ready because you will not know the day or the hour. Some people, you are seeing them for the last time this night. For the last time, you are seeing them this night. And messages like this, you will not hear it. We will be shouting, you shall not die, but live. Everybody will shout, amen, but people must die. People must die. And let me tell you what death is. Death is not the end of life. Death is the passage into another life. Sometimes you can be so righteous, your righteousness will buy you a ticket of transition. And Enoch walked with God and he was not. His family will cry. They missed him. But it was righteousness that quickened him out of this life. Because spirits know that death itself is not cessation of life. It's a transition into another. The only question you must answer in a night like this is where am I heading to? Where am I going to? Many of us, you are on your express way to hell. And Satan knows because he wants you to continue to have the name of the Lord on your lip. So that on that day, he will say, depart from me. I know you not. He will walk out of iniquity. Take the world and give us Jesus. Give me Jesus any day. Give me Jesus any time. Eternity is real, brother. Eternity is real. We are all flowing there. For the one who is saved, death is not a tragedy, it is a transition. The nation is becoming more and more very hostile. Every day you go out, it's a potential appointment with death. You are not guaranteed you will come back. The only guarantee you can make this night, make sure you are perpetually ready. Make sure you are ready. Any day, any time. I'm prepared to meet my God.
Somebody will cry. Somebody will cry where they are. Holy Ghost, don't let this iniquity, don't let this sin to have dominion over me. There are people under the sound of my voice. Satan, Satan believes that he has finished with you because he has established one habit, one besetting sin. There is one habit you are struggling with. So Satan now, Satan believes. Holy Ghost, let no iniquity have dominion over me. Let no iniquity reign over me. Let no sin have power over me. Hey! 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 Let no iniquity. at me brother sister look at me all your joy is not supposed to be in this earth the bible says for the sake of the joy that was set before him you too there must be a joy that is before you so that with that joy if things are not working here you will know that there is a consolation i have the story does not end here that guaranteed promised you that he's going to give you capital. He will give you capital. Now you have gone. You are ready. He now said, my, my friend, let me tell you, you don't know what is happening in the country. The devil now told you, why don't you go and use other means? Why don't you see what your friends are doing? No, sister. No. Oh, my home.
there are people there are people listening to me now you are almost falling for the pressure of life they are convincing you that you are a failure that your life is not progressing so you are almost going to put your hand into something no no brother no 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 for the joy that was set before you Everybody, wherever you are, you will need to forget the person by your side. Just take the next three minutes before we go and dethrone, dethrone anything that has that has occupied the seat of your heart. Dethrone it. Only Jesus will sit here. I live for him alone. Go ahead and pray. Say it with your mouth. I refuse to live for money. I refuse to live for fame. Exalt itself above the knowledge of the Holy One. Dethrone it from your heart. There are mountains and there are thrones, but only.
Please help those under the anointing. Help them. Help those under the anointing. The power of restoration will come upon five people. Five. That's what I hear in my spirit. That's all we do before we go. Five. You have lost fire. Fire. You lost it. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Begin to fan their altars now. Begin to fan their altars. Plant flames now. Flames upon them. Please help them wherever they are coming. A line, one line. There's one line from a hymn, one line from a hymn that has it has it has fired my head up. He says, "I will be a true soldier. I will die at my post." You know the people who wrote these hymns. I don't know what was inside there. They know that the end of this thing is death, and they embrace death. So death was not a threat. If Satan say I kill you for them, they say come, come. I will be a true soldier. I will die at my post. I will die defending the place they kept me. I will not run. Onward, onward. Christian soldier, marching on to war. There is a great campaign, a great campaign against the name of our God. Be a true soldier. Be a true soldier. of the prophets is subject to the prophet. Time is far spent. Listen, give me your attention if you can. Help anybody under the anointing around you. Please don't enjoy anybody. Help them up. Look at me if you can, everybody. Please, I need your attention. We are going now. When you live here, you will discover a dichotomy between your mentality, your school of thought, your mindset versus another popular mindset in the world. You will realize they are all living for themselves. Then you will realize you, you are conscious of an eternal, eternal reality. Live like a pilgrim. This world is not your home. You are only passing by. Make sure that before you finish passing by, leave an impact they will never forget. Let your footprints be on the sand of time. Then when it's time to exit this realm, don't cry for death. Wave it goodbye. Anytime it comes, tell it to come. Don't run from death. Don't cry. Because we know where we are going to. We are not helpless before death.
for me to live is Christ. If I die, if I die, is King. us you don't want to know half of it you bless people you bless them physically you bless them spiritually you are there for them emotionally they turn their back and stab you at the back your heart will break into a thousand pieces you hear some of the things the people you gave your life for say about you you ask yourself are, are they really are they with me I the only consolation is not if only in this world we have hope. We are of all men most miserable. I know there is a realm, there is a realm where they reward us from. My, my, my labor will never be forgotten with God. No. Even pastors, pastors, people, people I have called, I have called some team members here. I saw the struggle in their place. I have called some people. I said, go and attach yourself to the media team of this ministry. Go so that you strengthen their media. Their media is their only challenge. When those guys arrived here, the pastor did not know. I, I sent those people as a kingdom a kingdom service. He now called the people and say, uh, you know, you need to be careful the people you are listening to. I sent these people to come and help you. I released them to come to you. That you don't want to see any of my message in their phone. What is that? Are we still building the church of God? Some of you, they will form a clique, a clique of, of people. They will shut you off. They will close you. Stay with Jesus. Only you and Jesus is enough. Just stay there. You and Jesus is a big majority. Stay there. They can't bring you down. Stay there. Gossips here and there. I, I had to come out. Some of you were in the meeting. I had to come out and stand here and announce. If anybody have seen my nakedness here, raise your hand above your head. That that was that was my my consecration. This this is my work with God. Raise your hand above your head. They try. They do not prosper. They begin to malign your name. Just going at your back, telling people be careful. There are things I well I, I don't and there is nothing. They are just threatened by your rising. And then they are, they are, you know, casting as passion on your record. If you are still interested in what are people saying about me, you, you will be distracted. Face, face the work. Face it. How many girls, how many girls have showed up and said, eh, I'm supposed to ask me out. God, me? Me? Oh, and I thank God, my life is an open book. All kinds of wishful thinking. Some of you, even your friends, your friends are lying to you. They'll go and pick call somewhere and say, I'm the one that just called. You know, that I am a very private person, so I don't want people to know. I've told you, this is my life. There is no secret around anything. The day I enter a relationship, you will know. I will not hide anything. You will keep, you will give your all, give your, your material substance, give spiritual guidance, stay in the place of prayer for people. 
the same people will get up like this. The one day, the one day that things were a bit unstable for you and you could not keep that same pace, they will forget everything you have done. All. Oh, they, will, they will throw all those history and then judge you based on one, one day over a hundred, a hundred days you have been faithful. One day that you did not, you did not, you couldn't help them. They will just turn back and begin to malign your name. This, the pain of a minister, you don't know it. But I know, my hope is not only in this world. There is a realm that they are scoring my card from. Last year, when the conference was approaching, I saw that we walked by faith, took major leaps. It was approaching and there was no resources. I have not told anybody this thing. My, my seed I sowed into Solemn Assembly last year was everything I had with me. It was, as I then, I had 1.3 million. That was, I, I, nobody, nobody knew. They, they saw that it was, the thing was working. Everything was working. Things was working. How did it work? Till today, no question. And if you give to God, God will never forget. Can I, can I share something with you guys? It will interest you to know that the number of pains you will interact with on account of walking with Jesus. If they tell you before you say, Lord Jesus, come into my life, you, you will not say that. I want to end, I want to end today's teaching with the very first thing I said when we started. suffer many things because of Jesus but without him you will suffer more give a portion to seven give another portion to eight give, give something that transcends time let, let that one be eternal deposit let eight, let eight be what you are sending into eternity keep seven for life now but give for eight do things because of the city that is beyond the stars. There's another life. Invest there too. Invest there. Because of how congested we are, we can't have anybody come forward. Let the ushers just pass the offering basket. Please, listen, listen. Look at me. Give me your attention. I want us to give in the light of the coming solemn assembly. Solemn assembly is approximately three weeks or four weeks from now. Please, let's give. Let's give in the light of the solemn assembly. Let's give to us, you know, the success of that conference. Make sure you give. Give it as a seed of God will bless and prosper you. It is a kingdom principle to give. Let's pray over our offerings. While we package our offerings, through the waters I will go. If it leads me to you Through the fire I will go If the way leads to you There's no life for me I'm committed to you This is all there is for me I'm addicted to you Through the waters No other life, for no me. other life for me. Yeah, I'm committed. This to is you. all there is. This is all there is for me. Oh, I'm addicted 
project sanctuary is very much ongoing by the grace of God we are building a citadel of worship fitting on the name of our God who is excited please remember remember that project give generously to us East, and God will continue to bless and increase us in the name of Jesus Christ tomorrow by the grace of God we would be with the brethren in Zamfara. To our brethren, to our brethren in the city of Gusau. Is Gusau a city? Yes, we will be in, in the Federal Polytechnic, right? Kaura Namuda. It will be, it will be a festival of power. The Holy Ghost will be orchestrating a shift in the lives of his people and a very clear path for destiny will be laid out. So to all of our brethren who are around that region, take this as a clarion call of convergence. Let's all make our way to converge at Kaura Namuda. Tomorrow we'll be there live to bring the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to you. It has, it has, it has been you know, such a very hectic season of a lot of engagements, but Jesus has continued to glorify his name. Good news, there will be workers' retreats tomorrow. Who is excited? <laughs> Amen. All workers and intending workers, please, you make yourself available. The uh, venue is the residence of Evangelist Emmanuel Zwahu at Sabo Jare. There will be workers' retreats. There will be strategic arrangements, strategic planning, going on as regarding the solemn assembly so please don't absent yourself make sure you are there as we would be finalizing arrangements and plan as regarding the conference and then by the grace of God also um, we will be having a very epochal powerful leadership conference on the 20th of this month June 2023 who is excited listen listen let me give you a little hint. The person you see there is Dr. Shegun Palokwe. I went to a course, I, I took a course late last year at Haggai Institute because of that man. I took a course just to sit under him to hear the distilled wisdom. If you, if, if you, want, to, if you want to add years to your age, eh, sit under elders quickly. You, you fetch 20 years from their life, fetch it. Drink, drink the 20 years first. He will be here on a Tuesday. That's what the 20th is on, on, a, on a Tuesday. Please, I want us to come in the light of the meeting. So let's, let's come with a touch of, you know, a corporate appearance. Come, come. It's, it's going to be a leadership conference. So come smartly dressed. We will come early. If you don't come early, you will not even get to the seat. And there will be no overflow. So please, please on a Tuesday, Dr. Falopai will be here. It will be a mighty time of insight, a time of revelation, and a time of divine direction. Who is excited? <laughs> Last but not the least, Solemn Assembly is here. <laughs> By the grace of God, on the 13th and 14th of July, the heavens will be rained over this city, and God will pour marvelously his divine power and virtue upon our land. God will be visiting this land in heavily anointed vessels. You know, the presence of Apostle Michael Oropo, Minister David Dam, Minister Michael Stay, Minister Caleb Davy, Minister Evo Songs, you know, they, will, they are all excited. They cannot wait to be here. And believe me, listen, Exactly what we have told you will happen is what the Lord has continued to guarantee us will happen. That it will be a moment of divine shift for people. There will be a transition into new layers of reality for many people. People who have tarried on certain mountains for too long, there will be a shift. By the grace of God, the wedding of our brother, And our sister
Sheu and Kola is coming up on the 17th of June in this hall. <laughs> 17th of June happened to be next week, Saturday, so it's here. Get your dancing shoes, get your dress smartly ready. Um, the color for the day is gold, blue, and white. So, um, yeah, get those colors. But don't, don't kill yourself if you don't have it. I want to, from the depth of my heart, express my profound gratitude to every one of you. Your dogged commitment is an encouragement in the face of the several layers of discouragement Satan continues to throw at us. When I see your commitment, I see the level of response every Friday. It is another reason to continue to labor. The temptation of a good man is a good thing. When Satan tries to occasion and iniquity in your life and cannot his next attempt is to misdirect your life. The number of fields, number of spaces, number of regions that are currently seeking our attention to God who make them. Sometimes it is like if you don't know where God sent you to, the devil will open the door for you and you will call it breakthrough. I, I would have I would have jack passes. You you guys would just come on a Friday and see a note on this on this pulpit here, one small note here. 